kusema ati kwa sababu mtu ametoka pahali fulani ati kusema maendeleo itaelekezwa pahali fulani we want a country where every single citizen is entitled to development regardless of where the leader comes from hiyo ndio siasa tunataka Kenya hii kwa hivyo hao washenzi wa wachane na mimi a very categorical president about what he says should be the conversation dominating the headlines and not the quote-unquote marginalized Mount Kenya region. But is there truth to what some of those MPs have said? Let's talk a little bit more about that. Joining me in studio tonight on my immediate right is Professor Peter Kimuyu. Professor Kimuyu is a commissioner with a commission of revenue allocation, that's CRA, because we'll be talking also more about just who gets what and how is that determined. Remember the proposals around that as well, which goes into development. So thank you for being with us. Uh, also with us in the middle is Cecilia Mbarire. She's nominated member of parliament. She's a deputy majority chief whip and also a convener of the Mount Kenya Parliamentary Caucus. And you may remember that press conference last year I mentioned uh, from the Mount Kenya leaders where they met again to discuss development in the region. Last but not least, Edwin Sifuna is a Secretary General of the Orange Democratic Movement. Thank you all for being with us. Um, Honorable Mbarira, I'll begin with you because while there's a lot of, if you like, hullabaloo now around this conversation, the questions and concerns by leaders from the Mount Kenya region around development began with that meeting last year, I believe it was in October in Naivasha. And you read the press statement after the meeting, and one of the things that stood out was that you said and claimed that Mount Kenya region is marginalized and that more needs to be done. Do you still stand by those remarks today? Uh, well, thank you, Sophie, and uh, let me say that um, our meeting was one that brought us together because as representatives of the people that have elected uh, the members of parliament from Mount Kenya region, mm -hmm. there was concern that a lot more needed to be done. And uh, what I would like to say, Sophie, is that you know development is a process. It's not an event that you say once you finish this road, that's the end of the development of a particular area. Mm -hmm. Development is a process and people continue seeking for more development even when you think you've done a lot. Mm -hmm. There's never an end to development, so to say. Yeah. And therefore, as a result, you'll find that people continue to demand for more to ask for more from their elected representatives, and therefore it is valid for the elected leaders to keep asking for that more. Not but, because yeah. they, are, they are insensitive mm -hmm. to the other areas of the, con of the country, but because that is their role. But to, when to, the to leaders, lobby. allow me to jump in, when the leaders then, like Wanjiko would ordinarily say, Serikali is idea, and then we hear the leaders say the same thing. And there are structures in leadership, budget making process about how this can be done to ensure there's more resources coming down to the various regions. So that when leaders then stand and say, we are marginalized, we need more. So who is to do this more? Is it the president? To begin with, I think it's important to, to, to understand who does what mm -hmm. as per the constitution, obviously. Correct. And uh, what we have is that we have elected leaders whose business is really to lobby for development in their areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you'll find there's what a member of parliament can do with their CDF. There's what a woman rep can do at the county level with their GAF. Mm -hmm. There's what the governor is supposed to do with the allocation that goes to the county, mm -hmm. and of course is what the national government can do. Now, if you are a member of parliament and you know that you can only do so much with your 100 million, it is your business to move beyond the constituency 100 million and lobby for more development to come either from the governor, mm -hmm. from the president through the national government, and that is exactly what, what? every member of parliament does. All right. Let me come to SG, and I'd like to hear what you make of the way in which the leaders are going about this subject of development, because that's crucial. For ordinary Monainchi, that's what they care about, that their lives uh, be better, that they get service delivery, and they pay taxes for it. It's not a favor. They should be uh, having this done. So are they going about it the right way, though? 
It's, it's quite strange, uh, Sophia, especially when uh, the people who are speaking are members of parliament. You have uh, rightly alluded to the fact that uh, the budget-making process that we have in this country uh, is a function of parliament. Uh, they are the ones who allocate resources to uh, various development projects. And uh, if a member of parliament can stand up somewhere and, and claim that uh, the president or, or somebody else is not bringing development to his region, that person is being insincere. Because they are the ones who allocate resources, including uh, how much money goes to the office of a president. It is quite uh, surprising uh, when a member of parliament, and especially somebody who is uh, uh, a member of a budget committee, I will give you the example of my own personal experience during this past uh, budget-making process. We understood that, uh, for instance, as political parties, we were waiting for a certain amount of money to be allocated to us as political parties. Mm -hmm. When Parliament was discussing the budget, we were lobbying these members of Parliament. I know that I spoke to my counterpart in Jubilee, uh, the Honorable uh, Rafael Tuju, and we were calling people like uh, Kimani Ichungu, who is uh, the chairperson of the budget committee, mm -hmm. to tell him that this year we anticipate we hope that you will uh, uh, abide by the law and respect the court order and allocate 0.3% of revenue uh, that is due to political parties. We were doing that knowing very well that uh, once the budget is passed, it doesn't matter how high you jump or how, how deep a hole you dig. It is not going to change. If the road has not been allocated in the budget, you cannot start claiming that uh, there's going to be a road being built. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, raised issue with these members of parliament who go around uh, with, uh, say, the deputy president claiming he has brought Mandeleo. Those people do not know what they are in, uh, in parliament to do because even the office of the deputy president himself, they are the ones who are locating money. So it is a bit strange, and uh, I like what the president uh, has expressed because more and more you can tell that Uhuru is now hanging out with uh, uh, people from ODM because he's speaking like a person from ODM. He's saying that as a country we cannot develop one region only. We are all Kenyans and we are all entitled to, uh, to, to development because okay. we all pay taxes. Professor Kimuyo, I know you do not operate in the political political arena coming from the Commission of Revenue Allocation, there are proposals now around, you know, uh, how money should be distributed equitably, hopefully. But what has been the issue um, with the system, in your view, if at all, there has been, in as far as how the different regions get revenue? Thank you very much. Um, there's, there's a commission, actually, what we are completely beholden to doing a very objective exercise. Mm -hmm driven by some of the constitutional requirements like uh, equity. And then we also avoid conflict of interest. And I can give you like my personal example, which is that uh, although I hail from, uh, from Makueni and Machakos, the counties that I, I take care of are Narok, um, Omet, Yamira, Kisi, Migori, and Tukana. And so when we convene in the first place, we sort of say, let's just uh, Let's just be good Kenyans and understand that we, we, we are in this place so that we can help, help our country. Now, so at, at kickoff, I mean, we, we now have a proposal which is out in the public, and the intention is to get comments. But at, at kickoff, we, we looked at the Constitution and decided that uh, we need now to craft some objectives for this, this formula and follow them through with a framework that can give us objective res results. And uh, th basically, we have four objectives. The first one is about uh, enhancing service delivery, which is, which is central to, I mean, that's why we devote in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we have a second one, which, which basically will promote a balanced growth in, in the entire country to the extent that uh, the, the, the share of revenue that goes to the counties can actually bring about development. And then we have two other objectives, one on uh, just how to help counties raise enough revenues for themselves but also to, be, to apply good stewardship in terms of the use of revenues. Yeah, so that we don't lose our viewers. And as we get to talk more about these proposals, right. has there been a breakdown with the system we've had so far? Because the dissatisfaction, you have heard it from the leaders, and as far as what everyone is getting. With the proposals you have now, you yes. already have leaders from the marginalized counties uh, like Garissa or Jer coming out to say they do not agree with those proposals. I think the, the, the problem is a failure to understand that the environment is changing, mm -hmm. and that also we are using uh, new data. You know, if, if, even if you don't change the formula, if, if you apply new data with, with the old formula, the outcomes will be completely different. And of course, the fact that uh, there are allocations that were an outcome of the earlier, earlier formula means that people, people can, cannot help but compare. Mm -hmm. But actually, they need to understand that uh, in terms of comparison, they should look at the per capita allocations. Because 
if you look at those, what we've done is just to, to reduce the spread in terms of uh, the per, per capita locations. Um, and that was intentional on our part because if you look at the earlier locations, I mean, the, the, there was a huge disparity. And uh, that's okay because, you know, the, this, these processes are sort of a work in progress. We are, we are learning. And also, we, we are, we are, there's quite a bit of good data now, now coming from the counties, which wasn't there in the past. Okay. So we can refine the processes. And in the process, then you, you discover that uh, there will be differences in, uh, in the way the figures play out. Mm. But uh, I, I can assure Kenyans that our formula is very ob objective, actually. And, and then do you agree with that call we had last year in that uh, press conference when the, you argued that you produce 60% uh, GDP? Um, that's Mount Kenya region alone. Of course, that has been contested and unproven largely. Um, but do you agree then when they are contested that then they should get as much as they're giving? We don't agree. And I have to say that uh, as a commission, we don't, we don't get orders from anybody. We, we, are, we, are, we are independent. Mm -hmm. And we, we represent the entire country. I've already mentioned the, the class of counties that I'm responsible for. Okay. But they, they have nothing to do with the, with the place where I come from. All right. And that's true of all the commissioners, really. It's not just me. <laughs> all right. Honorable um, Mbaride, you are now and many others from Mount Kenya have come out to castigate Honorable Kuria and Gunjiri over the statements they made. But one would argue, isn't it in essence, are they not saying the same thing you were saying last year? What different have they said? Why have they become bad all of a sudden? Let, let, let me say that we have no problem with the fact that Kuria was advancing our development uh, agenda as we had begun it last year. Mm -hmm. We only have a problem with the way he put it across because he came out as uh, really being very disrespectful to the president. And having known that there had been conversations and we had used the necessary lobbying mechanisms mm -hmm. to make our voices heard mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the president was listening to the issues that we had raised, we, we felt that he had gone overboard. And having been involved in that process, mm -hmm. we also felt it was a bit uh, uh, unfair of him to make it look like the president wasn't listening to us because he had listened to us. Mm -hmm. And that made it very clear that in the same way he's looking at other regions, he's also going to make sure he looks into our region. Mm -hmm. And let me just say that um, listening to what uh, um, Sifuna has said, that in fact, Although members of parliament play a key role in the budget making process, we know that these budgets, especially budgets by the executive arm of government, do emanate from the ministries. So the reason why members of parliament go out of their way to lobby the president or to lobby the deputy president or even to lobby a minister in a, in, in a ministry is so that your issues mm -hmm. are taken on board at the budget formulation stage so that by the time the, 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 the BPS, the budget policy statement, comes mm -hmm. to the floor, mm -hmm. you already have your matter in the budget. Mm. So that you're not having to come and lobby at the point when parliament is already looking at the budget. Actually, I would say the budget making process is really a negotiating process where the executive arm of government must come and justify why they have put their budget the way they have in terms of uh, expenditure and explain that they have already a, a plan, like the big four, mm. that they must uh, ensure they have enough money to be able to implement the big four. Right. Uh, say that we want to do so many thousands of roads and ensure the stomach, and that's the only way that the members of parliament can listen and if they don't like it, they can change. But more often than not, the changes are very minimal, if any. Because a lot of the times, this lobbying started well before mm -hmm. the budget came to the floor of the House. Yeah, but I want you both to reconcile for me the place of devolution in this conversation. Because we're hearing a lot of national government, the president, but devolution in essence was to bring services closer to the people. We're not hearing much of that. Yes. And also the big four are largely, are all actually devolved functions. So are we getting it wrong at some point so that we end, end up becoming stretched because ministries are getting provision and uh, allocations on this big four, yet they are devolved functions. And where is the place of leadership in checking government and especially the executive, Sifuna? 
first of all, let me say, other than, uh, uh, you know, what Moshimiwa says uh, was considered disrespectful from the Honorable Moses Kuri, the most critical question for us is, was what was uh, coming out of his mouth actually factual? Mm. Was it factual that really Centro is not receiving its fair share of, uh, <laughs> of development, development, that the other areas and, uh, are receiving more somehow? Uh, you know, and I saw that posted uh, by Moshimua Bilo Kero, uh, just uh, lining, yes. uh, outlining the, the, the number of projects and their values that are, that are going on in, in, in central Kenya mm -hmm. regions. Uh, you cannot compare, for instance, uh, uh, the number of roads or even hospitals in places like uh, Kiambu and uh, a place like Turkana. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is something that we have acknowledged as a country that development has been skewed. It is why in our constitution we brought in what we call an equalization fund. Of course, it has not been uh, uh, funded as much as we, we had hoped it, it would have. And if you look at the reasoning behind the equalization fund, mm. it was very simple that the basic infrastructure in all of these other counties that have for a long time been marginalized needs to be brought up to a certain level that looks like the, the rest of the country. Yeah. So, it is something we have acknowledged even in our constitution that we have developed inequitably. So when somebody starts, uh, and, and, and you know we have been saying this as an opposition, that really, and the president has reiterated, and I'm happy, that's why I'm happy. I hear him talking like us. So what do you think days. motivated Honorable Kuria to make those remarks then, if then he was being disingenuous? It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand how you throw a tantrum because we have uh, just gotten one interchange at Ahero. The only interchange in, uh, in Nyanza, I would say. And between Gatundu, where he comes from, and Nairobi, if you just take Thika Road alone, how many interchanges can you count? between Nairobi and Gatun. You know, it's ridiculous. So for us, really, we have to understand and appreciate that we live in a new country where there is acknowledgement that really you cannot uh, be neighbors with somebody uh, where you are developed, you have everything, and your neighbors have nothing. Mm -hmm. And yet when there is an attempt by the president to now show that these politics where everybody feels that unless Sifuna is elected president, so the people of uh, Bungoma will never get roads. Mm. So what we want to, uh, to communicate now is that we have a new dispensation. We have a new thinking in terms of our politics. We would like that whoever it is that is president understands that because of all of us pay taxes, we must do what? We must develop. And I can understand why uh, members of uh, uh, parliament, maybe from central Kenya, uh, are not looking really at devolution because that has not been their, uh, their, their source of uh, development per se in the past. In other uh, counties where we have not felt central government, we are very happy and we are concentrating only on our governors mm. for them to be able to deliver. Okay. But you understand that central Kenya has enjoyed power for some time. And that because probably at the, in the past, because of the patronage of the politics that they were practicing, that maybe they were getting things directly from the center. So and that, still yes, that so, they, so they really don't see their governors. They still want uh, money to come from the president. We'll continue this conversation. I want us to take a quick break because also that conversation around the equalization fund and that we saw the marginalized counties expanded from a bracket of 14 to 34. Then one wonders what's the point um, of that bracket. So we'll talk a little bit more about that and also read some of your feedback, please stay with us.